What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Xtool S1 and all of the accessories that go with it. Now this model is fully enclosed, so I shouldn't have to wear any safety goggles or anything like that. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this all unboxed, we'll get it all laid out on the table, take a look at it, we'll get it set up, and then we'll try this out and let's see how well this performs. All right, so here's the main machine, all taken out of the box with everything laid out on the table, that everything that it came with. And from here, it looks like, let's see what's inside these. This looks like a whole material pack. I'm gonna guess this is probably instruction manuals and everything like that, which it is. This says triangular prism. I guess it's used to put down if you're not using the honeycomb bed to make better airflow so you're not getting burn marks. We'll come back to that. And I'm gonna guess this is the tools and screws and everything you're going to need. And here is the 40 watt diode laser. All the cords. And for ventilation, it does come with this nice, like really hard plastic hose. So taking a look at this, right off the bat, this does seem really nice. You can see the cover comes up and it is on a nice hinge so it doesn't just flop down, it actually stays up like it's supposed to. Let's take a look at the back side. So here you can see the power switch. You can see the little adapter for the cord the USB port and a port for the key. You have additional ports and you have where the tube goes for the air assist and the flame detection. And right here you have the smoke outlet. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this all set up and then we'll come back and go over all the other accessories. But I'm gonna go through these instructions, get this set up and we'll be back right after that. All right, so I got the, the main machine set up and this is all done. Now, this was fairly simple. This probably only took me, I don't know, 10 minutes at the most. And I did just need to remove these little stop plates that were in the back. 
I had to just mount the laser, which was fairly simple, plug in the cords, and plug in the exhaust fan on the back, and that was pretty much it. This was the only tool that was needed, since all the screws were the same, and it did include two keys, probably in case you lose one, you have a backup, so I'll set this one aside to make sure I don't lose it, but that was about it. But I am gonna go ahead and get the honeycomb bed put in, I'll get the air assist hooked up, so I'll go ahead and I'll do that, and then we'll be right back. All right, so I got the riser bed all installed, and I actually think this is pretty cool. It does have a little magnetic push button, and inside you can see that you can move this up and down depending on the height that you're going to need. And this honeycomb bed did come with these little clamps as well that are magnetic, so it sticks right to it to be able to hold down your piece. Now, I did have to run a piece of foam right along the top, and they had some extra strips to give you in case you're going to need them. But I did run one on the front and one on the back. And the front and back both have these magnetic clips. So all I have left now to do is I'm going to hook up the air assist, which is right here. We'll take a look at this. So in order to get this hooked up, I just need to take the hose push it right into there. There is a little clamp that you kind of push in, which locks it in place. And the other end, I'll hook up to the top port, just like that. Then I can take the power cord, plug one end into the unit itself, and the other goes into the machine. So now that I got everything set up, I will just go ahead and turn this on, make sure it works. So I'll flip the little switch in the back. And as you can see, it lights up in front and it does have some really nice lighting on the inside. So I'll go ahead now, I'm gonna get this connected to my computer and I will be using their Xtool Creative Space. Now I can also connect this to Lightburn, but some of the features won't be available in Lightburn so you'll have to use their Creative Space. So I'm gonna use Creative Space for the time being, just to make sure that I get everything dialed in and working properly. All right, so here I am over in Xtool Creative Space. And if you can see right here with the machine powered on, I have this little crosshairs. Now, if I go to the machine and actually move the laser, you can see that, that it moves with it. So I can be able to position my material anywhere I want. And if I just throw it, something down, let's say a piece of wood. I can move the crosshairs directly to where I want something to start engraving and we're good. So let's just say I want to go right to the corner of this piece of wood, uh, roughly right about there. So now over in the software, you can see that this is where it placed the crosshairs. So if I just take some text, I can move it right into that corner. I'll zoom in a little bit, and I can position it right there, right on that corner where it starts. So this does have a nice auto-focusing system, and when you click on it or click off of it, you can see that I can set the distance, and I can auto-focus measure this. So if I click on it, you can see that it automatically focuses it. It'll reprobe it come all the way back to where it was, and now I have a set distance of 43.2. So now all I need to do is go ahead and click on frame, which frames it, 
Once that is complete, I can go ahead and click Process, click Start, and click the button one more time for it to start. And as you can see here, this only took 10 seconds. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and let's go take a look at it. So it did come out pretty light, but again, I was just running a test, and I'll have to bump up some power, change some speeds, and things like that, but it did engrave it right on this bottom portion, right where I wanted it to, right in the corner, so I think the, the accuracy is pretty good. So I'll go ahead and run another test on this. This time I'm going to actually do two things to try out how this works if in case you want to do multiple things, but I will be using these little tie downs. And you know, let's just place one there and uh, I'll place another one there just to hold the material in place. So let's start in this top left corner and we'll place something there and then uh, maybe we'll just go right to the top right and we'll just place something over there just to see how accurate we can get this. So back over in Creative Space, I'm just going to keep the same hello. And since I have this moved to the top left, I'm just going to position this in that corner. And now I'm going to move the actual laser head over. I'll move it to the other side. And if I zoom out now, you can see that it's over here. So I'm actually going to do some more text. Let's just type right for this one. And I can zoom out, it's way up here. Let's just move it down. And I'm gonna put it in this corner. So now this should do the left and the right, but let's go head over, let's frame this up and let's see if it's actually going to do those spots. So I'll go ahead, I'm gonna click frame. And again, it beeps. I'll click the button. And you can see that it outlines where it's actually going to engrave. So I'm going to close this lid. I'll click framing complete. I'm actually going to change the power settings on these and bump it up a little bit. Let's go to, let's go to 35% and I'll keep it at 150 speed millimeters per second. So I'll go ahead. I'm going to click process and we'll click start. So let's take a look. Just remove these clamps. So I actually forgot to change the speed on this one. And instead of having it at 130, I had it set only to 20 millimeters per second. So it was going really slow or this one went really fast. So I think that one is more what I was looking for. And that just overshot it. So I'm not going to go over how to use creative space and, and every little function that it does and how it works. I just kind of wanted to see how it's going to work to position things, how it auto focuses on materials and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to probably want just one more test on this piece of wood, but we'll, we'll do an image and see how that turns out because I'm just kind of curious. I'm not exactly sure how the settings work. I'm so much more used to using light burn. So I may have to go back to using light burn for certain things, but we're going to try out an image. We're going to see how this burns it and, and kind of go from there. So I'll go ahead. I'll try framing up this skull and engraving this, and we'll see how this turns out. As for the settings, I'm going off of their website and what they say to use for basswood. So I'm going to be using a power of 25, a speed of 200 millimeters per second, I will use the grayscale mode and 100 lines per centimeter and bidirectional I'll leave on. So that's according to their website. If we take a look right here, this is what the settings that they give. So that's what I'm going off of. So I already have this all framed up. I'm just going to go ahead and click process and we'll see how this turns out. So taking a look at this, it took 5 minutes and 28 seconds to complete. So let's go take a look at it. So 
taking a look at that, I think that came out really good. I'm quite happy with that. So I think Xtools settings are pretty much dialed in. So can't really go wrong. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hook up the 2 watt IR laser along with the rotary attachments. And we're going to try that out. But I think in order to use that, I will need to lower this and remove the honeycomb bed. So here I have the 2 watt IR laser. And all I need to do is just unscrew these two screws at the top, lift it up, unplug the air assist, and unplug the connector. And simply do it in reverse for the IR. So here I have the rotary all set up. And I will just be doing one of these stainless steel rings, connecting it as easy. One piece just goes right into the side of the motor and the other goes on the inside of the machine right here. Here you can see the little plug that covers it up, but I can move this aside. And plug it right into there. And then I'll simply get the ring all set up. Tighten that up and we're all set. All right, so here I have my channel name and in order to make this come out properly, I am going to need to reflect this horizontally. And as far as settings go, I do have this set to chuck. I have this set at laser cylindrical and not flat. This way it uses the rotary. The diameter of the ring is approximately 22.8 and the distance is 52.7 from when I measured it using the auto measure. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to frame this up, click process, and let's see how this turns out. All right, so that ring has finished. Let's take a look at it. And I think that came out really good. So the total time for this was two minutes and 37 seconds. Now I probably could have sped this up a little bit to make it go a little bit faster, but overall I'm happy with that. So I think that's looks just fine. So I'll probably run a few more tests on this machine, probably on some different materials. And then I'll go ahead and I'll give you my thoughts and tell you what I think about this. All right, so I wanted to try out a little bit of cutting on this machine, so I made these little stands, as you can see right here, and engraved a little image right on top. And I think it came out great. Right here, you can see that it pretty much cut it out with ease. There's really no charring at all. I did have the air assist turned on, but it more or less cut it out like butter. Super easy. I did have the speed at pretty low and the power set to the max, but it did not have one problem cutting out this piece of plywood. And now I can use this stand as a little can holder or something like that. So I'll go over a few things that I really like about this machine and then a few things that I think could be a little bit better. But let's start with the things that I like. So first the packaging and setting this up and how it came. I think this came very nicely packaged. It did have straps to keep it all in place along with foam all around it to make sure that nothing got damaged while it was being shipped. Setting this up took no time at all especially just for the, the main machine. It did take a little bit longer to set up the risers and air assist and rotary attachments and everything else. But for the main machine, this didn't take long at all, probably only about 10 minutes. This machine does come with a 40 watt diode laser, which is super powerful for an enclosed machine like this. And I didn't have to have any safety goggles, although they did include a pair, as you can see right over there. But I didn't even have to take them out of the box, so I didn't even need them. Now, if you didn't want the 40 watt, you can also opt for just the 20 watt or even just the IR laser itself. So you have a few different options to go with on this machine, depending on your preferences. I do like that this operated rather quickly at 600 millimeters per second is kind of the max that it goes, which isn't the fastest out there, but to me, for how it cuts and how well it does, I think it's just fine. And I really don't need to push it that much faster than that. So. I'm quite happy at 600 millimeters per second. 
Now I do really like their accuracy when it comes to setting this up and positioning things on the canvas inside of the software. I was able to just move things right on the left or right on the right and the corners and things like that. So I think the positioning system works really well. Now compared to a camera, is it better? I don't really know. I, I can't really say that it is or it's not, but I have used the cameras in the past. And the one thing I don't like about the cameras is once you set those up, you can't really touch it or move it. Otherwise you're going to have to recalibrate the entire thing over and over again. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. And with this, you don't really have to. And once you kind of move it into position, you're pretty much locked in. So I think that works really well. And it might even be better than a camera system, but you do constantly have to kind of go back to the machine, move it over, go back to the software and, and back and forth over and over again. So it can kind of be a pain for certain people. I do really like their autofocus system. Once I placed my material down inside the bed, all I had to do was click on the autofocus button and it moved the Z probe down, focused it correctly, and that was about it. Now with that being said, I did have a slight little hiccup with the autofocusing system on when it probed it. Now, if I had everything set up in the software where I wanted it and positioned correctly, when I went and hit the autofocus probe, it would probe it, it would move back over here, and then when it returned, it was always off and it put it off by maybe half a millimeter in the corner from where it was supposed to be from where I started it. Now that could be from where it goes back and it hits the sensor. Maybe every time it does that, it's always off by maybe just a slight little bit. So I would recommend if you're setting this up, make sure that you actually focus the material first before you lay everything out on the canvas. Otherwise, if you do it afterwards, your positioning may be off just a little bit. I do really like that it was really easy to set up all of the attachments that came with it. The rotary attachment just plugs right in here on the front of the machine on the inside. The air assist, all I had to do was plug in the tube and connect it. And the IR laser, all I had to do was unscrew the two screws on top, pop it out, put the new one in, screw it back in, and that was it. The riser works really well as well. It's magnetic, it opens up, closes on both sides. So if you're using the conveyor, it's really easy to feed things through. And also with the honeycomb bed and the tray, if you need to move it up, you can easily pull it out, adjust it as needed. I do really like the safety features that it has on this. It does have a five direction flame detection, which you can see the sensors on the inside. It has the emergency stop button. It also has a tilt impact detection function. So if this gets rotated or tilts, it will shut off automatically along with if you open up the lid while it's running, it will shut off as well. I do really like the instruction manuals that came with it, and there actually was one for each accessory, so definitely a bonus. It was easy to follow, and it is supported in multiple languages as well. I think this cut and engraved really well. As you saw earlier, this was a little skull guy that I did on this piece of basswood, and I think it came out great. And this was just based off of the settings that they had on their website using the IR laser. I think it engraved this stainless steel ring more or less perfectly. Cutting it out, these little tables that I made, I think worked great as well. So as far as the exhaust system goes, I think it was really easy to hook up. I just had it run right out my window and I think it worked perfectly. I didn't have any smoke lingering around or seeping out the sides. I was still able to smell it, but I think that's kind of a given as you're going to be able to smell it no matter what machine or how good of a, an extraction system you have, just because it's always going to kind of linger around. And as soon as you open the lid, you can definitely smell that burnt wood or material or whatever you're using. But overall, I think it works really well. As far as using their software goes, I think it works really well. Now I do prefer to use Lightburn, but in order to have all the functions that you want to use, you kind of need to use their creative space. And one of the things, for example, is you can adjust the flame alarm, you can change some of the brightness, you can turn off that annoying buzzer and beeping sound every time you need to do something. And to do that, all you really need to do is go into the settings inside of Creative Space. And in the upper right hand corner, you just click on a little icon and you can scroll down and then you can adjust the flame alarm. You can change the light brightness on the inside. You can turn on and off how long the fan runs after you're finished engraving on something. So if you don't want that smoke lingering, 
I actually adjusted mine and changed it to 30 seconds. That way it just runs a little bit longer to extract any smoke that's left over. And you can turn on and off the buzzers that beep at you no matter what you do. Every time you do something, it makes a beeping sound, which can get rather annoying after a while. So now I'll go over a few things that I think could be just a little bit better on this machine. First is the placement of the power button. It's all the way in the back. I think it might be a little bit better if they placed it on the front of the machine. Now, not a huge deal, but if you have this up against a wall, you're going to have to lean over every time to get this turned on. So next is the honeycomb bed. While I do really like it and it works really well, there is a whole lot of wiggle room when you move it around. So I think they could have just made it a little bit bigger to fit the size for this machine. So I think the only other issue I had with this machine was when it was doing the autofocus and probing and when it returned in the software, it wasn't exactly positioned properly, but not a huge deal. But I think it's something that could be looked at into a little bit more. It could just be a firmware thing or something like that or a software glitch, I'm not really sure. But I think that's about it. So overall, I think this machine is fantastic. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. I would also recommend though that if you do purchase this machine that I would also get the riser along with the honeycomb bed as well. That will just allow you to make sure that you have enough distance if you are cutting thicker material or engraving thicker material and you won't get that charring nearly as much even without the air assist if you use the honeycomb bed. Now I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick up this machine along with all the accessories that go with it. So I hope you all found this video helpful and if there's anything I didn't go over or things that you want me to show or anything like that, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll try and cover it in a future video. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.